that uh, uh, we are here today uh, not to discuss the, um, the merits of uh, Plan Change 7, uh, that, that those discussions will take place uh, in front of independent commissioners. Um, however, uh, for me today, um, it's, a, it's a hard decision that, that I'll be making, but because of, we had this discussion previously, that having um, parts um, 7A, B and C, the uh, Omnibus Plan Change, Part B, the Orari, Tanuka, Opehi, Pariora Plan, and also the uh, Part C, the Waimakari, Waimakariri Plan, um, all coupled together with the PC2 of the, um, the Waimakariri um, uh, WRRP, doesn't give us the ability to discuss um, each of those parts uh, on merit and each of those parts uh, individually. Um, as you will know, when the, when the, um, the council table I, I abstained, um, partly uh, due to um, the, the quarter of um, Kati Huirapa regarding um, the ancestral river that they really um, connect to, to Umukaha. Uh, and the and the uh, the the, um, the limits um, and targets set not being um, stringent enough. I voted against um, the zipper, um, and similar to what um, <coughs> Councillor Farm has already mentioned about the the cultural values that might really hold uh, close regarding their streams and, and the rivers in their area, um, and also for their um, coastal lagoon at Aka Aka. Um, However, since uh, schedule, uh, schedule One, uh, there has been some, um, some improvements uh, and some good uh, consultation with, with Mana Whenua. Um, that has been one-on-one -on -one with uh, the hapu of uh, Kaiti Huirapa. Uh, a lot of work has been done there and also with my Tuahuri uh, regarding uh, uh, their Takiwa as well. In a sense, um, part A of the Plan Change 7, the omnibus, um, and we've heard it already mentioned before that uh, it has a lot of wins um, for some of the goals we are looking at for water management and also for biodiversity um, improvements inside, um, inside the Canterbury, Canterbury region. And I really, um, on, on the uh, um, part A, the changes to region-wide provisions to enable consideration of micro values in relation to wide range of activities. Uh, and and you know, that, that has worked, that is Tapai Hedinga has, has achieved through working with the staff here at um, <coughs> Environment Canterbury, um, and that has been a positive, a positive um, work stream, and, a, and you know, really looking forward to that moving forward. And also, Council of Farms are in freshwater species. Um, in regards to Part B, um, and that the uh, Orari um, uh, catchment and you know, Orpi is uh, the protection of culturally significant sites, especially being the um, Tui Tui Nehira, the rock art sites. Um, Kati Huirapa, uh, that is who they are, and it's kind of a lot of their stories and um, uh, those rock art. And so having those areas protected uh, is very culturally significant for them. And also, of course, the, the, wai, the Waipuna, um, the springs, the spring protections are heads because they always feed their, their freshwater streams. And also, uh, um, we mentioned Bandy Holmes uh, earlier and, uh, and the passion that she had for the Tumu, tumu Kaha. Uh, that the, the, the limits and targets on the Tumukaha um, for, for Kati Huidapa do not go far enough and probably quick enough. Um, Fano have used the river for Maidanō, um, who have watched the Modi diminish on their awa uh, and have seen the loss of, of Whakapapa, um, will not see any, any of the benefits that are in uh, um, Plan Change um, 7 uh, Part B because they think it's not fast enough. Um, and then they unfortunately will have to hand those onto their mokupuna um, and to see and hopefully that uh, there's people still around to implement the cultural practices that have been uh, slowly lost over, over time. In Part C, um, we've already heard that the establishment of the Te Aka Aka Coastal Protection Zone, uh, which is requiring high risk farming activities in the zone to prepare and implement um, an ordered farm environmental plan. Um, has partly, you know, um, like to a Huridi feel that they uh, is, is kind of really connected them to their to their air, uh, to their whenua, um, and to their reserve, which was set aside by uh, Judge Fenton 
back in the, in the 1860s to really acknowledge that um, that area does need to be cleaned up um, and the and the kaimoana that uh, is continually taken from there that in the future that it'll actually uh, be <laughs> the consumption of it you probably won't, you won't have to worry about what you're actually eating out, um, out of that reserve uh, out of that uh, estuary uh, and also some culturally significant sites. However, um, in, some, uh, in some areas, and uh, I know um, Councillor uh, Sankul has already mentioned that people want it to go faster, people want to see more limits and reduction on nitrates, and, and that, is, that, is, that is my turhudity. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, we have Section 32 and we, and we look at the, the cost-benefit assessment and analysis on, on, um, on areas, but for one thing, uh, for Mount Whenua and for for <coughs> I've mentioned this before, uh, an economic effect of cost high. Uh, its areas, loss of access. Um, some fenton reserves were established, and um, access to to fenton's reserve were established to have access to waterways, etc. And now there's no water anywhere to, to and the um, in the inability to carry out um, those practices. So in a sense, uh, uh, and that's been going on for 100 and 150 years, so in the effect of, of that cultural practice, that loss of mana, the loss of papa, the, the, the diminishing modi of, of areas, um, how is that reflected um, in, these, uh, uh, in these section 32 and you know, cost benefit assessments, etc.